Hey, what's up YouTube? It's your boy G from Team Hybrid BMX. So coming back at you today with a little little short tutorial video on how to take apart your used bike. It's important to take apart a used bike and there's a reason why it's important. You want to make sure, even if it's complete, even if you have everything, obviously I don't have my cranks, okay, or my sprocket or chain. Okay, so there's a couple items there that in a later video I'll show you guys how to do, okay? I'll show you how to take a chain off and everything, okay? But Right now, I want to show you guys just the basics of when you get a used bike like I did for 50 bucks, how to take it apart and take care of it. And I don't want to hear the excuses of like, oh, well, I didn't have the tools to do it because like I just had to dig around my house to look for the right tools. So, but if you guys are short on tools, go to like Harbor Freight or any of those places. I know 3D Machines is a big fan. Uh, you can check his channel too. He's awesome. Uh, but check out 3D Machines. He uses Harbor Freight a lot. Um, I use Harbor Freight a lot because the tools are cheap and they're still halfway decent, especially hand tools. Like, I wouldn't go for like the power tools, but for hand tools for sure. All right, guys. So what you're going to need in order to take apart your bike, okay, you're going to need some, now obviously these ones are nice T-handle ones. You don't have to have these, but I got these at Harbor Freight for like four or five bucks and it came in an entire set. So you check it out. Okay. You're going to need these because obviously you have Allen keys on your bike. Okay, make sure you get the right size. Most bikes nowadays are metric. Okay, so you're gonna want to buy metric. Do not buy American. I did that, made a mistake. Now I can only use these like never. Okay, so don't buy, make sure you buy metric. More than likely it's metric. Okay, so you're gonna need that. Okay, what else are you gonna need? Which, obviously, I'm not gonna show you guys how to do this in this video for the sake of time because YouTube's a pain in my butt now and only lets me do like 15 minute videos so I tried doing this video before and it was way too long so I'm gonna have to shorten it up somehow and the best way I can do it is by I already loosened up the bolts on these wheels and I'm gonna show you guys some basic tricks with that but you're gonna need for tools though when you do it you're gonna need if you have pegs you're gonna need an adapter um, an extension for your socket wrench okay and you're gonna want deep well sockets guys because with the way they make these now, they're so long that short wells just won't work, okay? So, and then I always use this too. So like the way you would do it is, I'm not gonna show you guys completely, but the way you would do it is, you know, have an, have an adaptable, um, or I guess this would be called, I forget what they call this exactly, adjustable, there we go, adjustable crescent. And the reason I use an adjustable crescent, a lot of guys are like, ooh, you could strip stuff out. Only if you're not using it correctly, okay? These are designed to be quick tools, okay? So, like, if I'm taking this part, I can go from this size, especially with BMX bikes nowadays, because they used to be all one size. Like, if your bike is all one size, like, if you have 17 mil in the back and 5 base in the front, like, you can easily go from, you know, if you have both, if you have both, if you have just 17 mils or you have just 5 base, then obviously use the right tool for the job. But if you need to just go quickly from this to this, especially in your bag when you're going to the park and stuff, or when you're going out street riding or whatever, if you need to change a tire real quick, this is a good tool to have. So you can go down here, take that off, but we're just gonna do it by hand this time, okay? And then the other thing you wanna have is a handy dandy little flathead screwdriver. Flathead screwdrivers are like the best thing you could probably have for taking apart your bike, okay? Uh, as far as, um, Taking your tires off, if you have a hard time taking your tires off, you can use a flathead for that. Just be careful. You don't want to bend the walls of your rims. Um, but I'm just going to do a quick demonstration with my hands. I already took the air out of the tires and everything. So first things first, you want to take off the front rim here. We're going to obviously loosen up the bolts with your wrenches, okay? And see, it's still not coming off. Why is it coming off? Oh, yeah, that's simple. Usually nowadays with front rims especially because they don't want you to like flying off. It's a liability kind of thing They don't want your front rim to fly off. But put these little spacers in here And all you gotta do is use your screwdriver and kind of just knock that right out of the way and bang a look the rim came right off Okay, and then the first thing you want to do for inspection when you're when you get your used bike Okay, when you're checking your wheels I just hold them a lot of guys some guys have truing stands But obviously if you're a new rider and you're buying a used bike, you probably don't have a truing stand, okay? So you wanna hold your arms as close to your sides as possible like this, and just give her a spin, okay? And keep it st steady, and then look at it. Make sure it's not hopping, and make sure it's not wobbling side to side. If it is, more than likely, your rim just needs to be trued. The other thing you wanna do, let's be quiet for a second and listen. 
Okay. You guys hear that? Okay. That is a hub that really needs greased bad. So I'll be taking this apart and greasing it eventually. Okay. As soon as I get some fills, I use fills grease for my bike. Um, if you guys haven't heard of it, look it up. That stuff is incredible for bearings. It is just amazing for bearings. Okay, so then the next step is gonna be taking your back wheel off. So we're gonna loosen those up. Obviously, you guys are gonna do it with a wrench, okay? And we wanna take our tires off. I took the other tire off just for the sake of time. So we're gonna take this one off. So I already let the air out. If you guys need to let the air out of your tires, Again, going back to our, our trusty little flathead, you're gonna wanna hit that little depressor inside and then give it a good squeeze and you'll let all the air out of the tire. And then you wanna push that, that nipple up, okay? So it's out of the way. And some guys go with this first, some guys don't. I like to just to get it out of the way, okay? See how I pulled that back just like that? And then you just go around the rim and boom, it comes right off. Okay, just as easy as that. And we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with the, the front rim, but the thing you want to listen to is the cassette this time. And if you have time to, wait to see if it gives you a rollback. If it gives you a rollback, it really, and that one did. You're going to need some, that definitely needs oil or uh, greased as well. So this needs greased again as well. And we're checking for truancy again. No bumps, no, no nothing. It's pretty straight. So we're good there, okay? Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is, again, with your tires, guys, too, I don't have time to show you today, okay? But you're gonna wanna take this out, you're gonna take your tubes out, and then pump them full of air, and what I use is soapy water, and I coat the, either use, a, use a soapy water and try to locate holes if you have any, because the last thing you wanna do is go out and ride, and then boom, brand new bike, can't ride it because you got a flat tire, okay? So soapy water in a squirt bottle, you can use that and see if it bubbles, or you guys can put them in a like five gallon, or not five gallon, like a 10 or 20 gallon uh, tote and with soapy water and test them that way as well. Fill them full of air and see if you can find holes, okay? So now we're on to the next step. Okay, this is a size, this is a um, metric would be six millimeter, okay? Now it could be different for your bike, more than likely it won't be. It's gonna be a little tight, okay guys? It's gonna be a little snug, but you want it to be. Okay, when you're sticking it in there, if it's not snug, you're using the wrong size Allen wrench. Okay, now the nice thing about T-handles is that you got plenty of grip. So when you twist, it usually loosens right up. Now this guy had him tightened really nice. Now since we're taking the bars off, we wanna go all the way with them. But before we do that, I forgot one other thing that I wanted to just demonstrate to you guys real quick. You guys, if you're taking your grips off, the easiest way to do it is either have A, a utility knife, or B, if you have a old steak knife, do not use mom's brand new steak knife, okay? If you have an old steak knife or some kind of knife laying around, use that. And be careful, do not cut yourself or stab yourself with a knife. Okay, the way you're gonna wanna do is obviously away from yourself, you're gonna cut the grip off like this, with, I use usually the first like inch of the knife and just go nice and smooth across it and then it'll just slide right off. If not, you can kind of, once you get the first cut done, you can usually peel it back like a banana, okay? So there's a quick one for you guys. Okay, now let's finish up this, let's finish up this stem, get these bars off, okay? Very quickly, because we're probably running low on time here. Okay. Also, once you get it, once you get it to the point where you can finger it off, that's fine. Just finger it off then. Okay. Oh, there we go. And then once you get it far enough to where you're gonna go like that, you can just finger loosen the bolts. Your fingers are your best tool, honestly. Once you get them, once you get them finger enough where your fingers can take it off, your fingers are your best tool because you can grip anything with them. Rather than this wrench where I'm spending all kinds of time trying to twist it off. See, bang, done. And down come the bars, okay? Now that's unconventional. Some people do it the opposite way. Some people leave the wheels on, but I like it this way because see, now the bike's standing up on its own. I got no problems. I got the bars out of the way so I can just work around this, okay? So here you go, guys. I'll pu push it more toward me so you guys can see, okay? So now we have the bars off. You're like, uh-oh, well, there's all those. Oh man, I lost all my Allens. I lost all my Allen bolts. Well, here's how you do that. Here's how you fix it. Okay. 
Here's how you fix it so you don't lose your stuff. Okay, you're gonna wanna just hand tighten them in. I don't go all the way, I just do a couple threads, okay? Because it's a pain in the butt when you go to put your bike back together and you have to take a bunch of parts off. It's just inefficient. So just get a couple threads on it so that way the, the bolts stay, okay? So there we go, we got that. Now we get the rest of the stem off. Maybe, there we go. Ooh, that bag was on there tight. That's good though. That means it was, it was probably factory tight. I don't think this guy ever probably took it apart. So that's another thing you guys are gonna run into. Uh, even factory tight, you're gonna get you're gonna get it that way sometimes. And this isn't this is all stock components. Everything on here right now is stock components. That's what was on this bike when I got it. The only thing that wasn't stock was one tire. So everything else was stock. Okay. So now we should have it loose. Make sure it's loose by just giving it a little twist. Um, and then obviously stick it right in there. Some of you guys will have the bolt, but more than likely nowadays. Everybody's kind of starting to use just the Allens. It just makes it easier. So that comes right off of there. Slowly pull this back and off. Okay, and there we go, we got our stem. Now you're probably wondering, okay, now where do I put my stem though? That's an easy fix. Okay, so you're gonna have a box. Okay, any kind of box. Any kind of box, here's a box, okay? Gingling, okay, so I have a box to put some of my parts in, okay guys? This is important to have. I'm sorry you guys are like winging a little bit. I accidentally hit the camera. But you put your bike name on there if you have multiple bikes, that's what I do. Um, whether it's my bike or whatever, I'll put what bike is on and what parts are gonna be in the box. So, stem, forks, seat clamp. You're not gonna put a whole lot in here, right? Okay, you're gonna wanna keep the majority of the, the bolts and stuff, you're gonna wanna keep with the parts, okay? So, there's our parts box. So there we go, we put the stem the parts box all right now let's pull this guy off and see how bad these bearings actually are because i'm sure they're horrific now and let me see where we're at guys let me just make sure i can still record here because we got to be getting yeah we're at the 12 minute mark guys so we're gonna have to hurry this up a little bit if i don't film the whole video now i'll film another part later okay so let's see take this off of here there we go and then take off the compression ring. All right, and then you can check your bearings a couple different ways. Let's take the forks out first, now that we have all that off. Okay, and then there you go, you can pull the bearing right out. Now this bearing is still good, see? Nice and smooth, still running nice. Just needs a little bit of grease and it'll be good. So that bearing's still good. So we're gonna put the bearing in there. We're gonna wanna put all this stuff in there or Guys, you can do it this way as well. Again, with this. Also, check the bottom as well. Make sure the bottom one is good. A lot of times the bottom one will be worse than the top. In this case, they both survive pretty well. This one's starting to get a little loose though. And let me show you what I mean by loose. If you look right inside here, let's see if I can get it on video. If you look right inside here, when I push that back and forth, the, the bearing casing, it moves back and forth a little bit. So that, that's probably gonna have to be replaced, okay? This is why it's integral to take apart your bike when you get it. All right guys, we're getting pretty close to the end of the video here, so let's finish this up, okay? Put this on here, you put all these back on. This is what I always do, okay? I always put everything back right where you found it for the most part, which is on the forks, okay? Put that back on there. Just squeeze that guy on there because it's got a little rubber o-ring so that way it's sealed which is nice and then you put that guy on top of there and what does that do look flip it over and guess what then it going nowhere and then you can put the forks in the box okay and then now we're going to do the seat real quick very very quick we'll do the seat which it should already be loose yeah it is now usually you'd obviously loosen your seat clamp but because i already loosened my seat clamp it's already done now, for some reason, this guy did like old school riders do, and he slammed the seat post down to the nuts, so it's going to be a pain in the butt to get it out quickly. So. There we go, almost, almost there, almost there, I can feel it, it's going to come out. There we go, bingo, gone. Okay, take your seat clamp off. 
goes in there. Seat and post go in there. And there you go, guys. That's how you take apart bike apart. And if you want to check your top tube, let's see if I have time for that. I do not. You guys have a good one. I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching Team Hybrid BMX.